Well, um, I grew up in a small town in Ohio near Youngstown called Columbiana. It was a dry town, very conservative. I was dragged to charismatic Christian revival tents a lot when I was around 14 or 15. And many, some of you heard about my, my brother John passing, and he was my mentor. And John went to Yale, and he was, um, and when he came back from Yale, uh, he brought back a book uh, when I was 15 years of age, and it was called Altered States of Consciousness uh, by Charles Tart in 1970. And uh, my best friend, Ryan Snyder, oh, I grew up with him and we hung out together all the time. And uh, I was just mesmerized by my brother John's experiences in Mexico and Colombia, eating magic mushrooms. And I was a younger brother, all too eager to, to emulate my older brother. Um, and he lent me this book. Um, and so I had this book, Alder States of Consciousness, and I'm sharing it with my friend, Ryan Snyder. And Ryan goes, well, I want to borrow, borrow this book. And I said, sure, Ryan, you know, but give it back to me in a week, you know, so that was okay. So a week passes and I go, Ryan, you know, it's been a week, give me back my book. And he kind of hemmed and hawed and wouldn't return the book. And so I waited a little while longer and a while longer and I kept on asking him and he kept on avoiding the question. And finally I said, I demand, I want that book back. I'll come down to your house and get it. And he goes, I'm sorry, Paul, I can't give it back to you. And I said, why? He said, my father found it and burned it. I said, your father burned my book? <laughs> it was given to me by my brother in trust. You know, I'm in the middle of this. And uh, so, and it really upset me. But then I began to think, wow, the information in that book was so powerful. It made, it inspired, it made somebody burn the book because they had the fear of this knowledge. So I thought, wow, this is the forbidden fruit. And, I'm <laughs> and these charismatic Christians are just really not in the same realm that I want to be in, right? So my brother John, that realm was much more interesting to me. So this really influenced me in a huge way. I never got the book back, by the way. Um, and, um, and Ryan Snyder's father was convinced, you know, I was from Satan and corrupting his son. Anyhow, so I didn't have a magic mushroom experience until I went to Kenyon College in Ohio when I was around 19 years of age. And I was really eager to get some magic mushrooms. So I, I bought some and I got a bag of mushrooms for like 20 bucks. And I thought, okay, it's reasonable. Um, but nobody else would, you know, I didn't know who else to eat them with. So um, late in the spring, early summer, I decided that, well, set and setting is important. I read about that. You know, Andrew Weil had a chapter in the book and a whole bunch of other people. And so I just thought, well, I'll walk about two miles to this really, really beautiful rolling uh, Green Hill countryside with these beautiful oak trees. Um, and so I thought, okay, I might as well eat the mushrooms. And I thought the bag was like one dose, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, I figured, well, okay, you know, they said about half an hour before it can come on. It's so about halfway through the walk, I started eating the mushrooms. And then I'm eating the mushrooms, and, I, and I'm in love with climbing trees ever since I was a kid, you know. And there's this huge oak tree um, on the very, the very top of this hill. So I'm eating the mushrooms, I see this oak tree, you know, it's just perfect for climbing. And, I, and a storm was coming, I could hear thunder and lightning in the, on the horizon. So this is the tree is the very top of the high, highest hill, and I thought it would be a great viewscape. And so I consumed the entire bag of mushrooms, and I climbed to the top of the tree, so I have a really good, good visual. And then this visual was, you know, those of you in the Midwest in the summer, you know, with these, these boiling black clouds with lightning strikes, you know? And then I started having, you know, suddenly the, the air became a liquid. Like, Whoa, this is what I read about, you know, look at this, you know. And then the storm front's coming out at me. And then fractal patterns. Waves. Well, whoa, this is really interesting, you know. But the experience didn't slow down. It kept on getting more and more intense. And I'm at the top of this tree and I started getting vertigo and the storm and the lightning's coming and this real, this frontal a hot wind I mean, precedes the clouds, you know, before the rain comes. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm getting vertigo. I am in the most dangerous place that you can be <laughs> doing a lightning storm at the top of this hill. Uh, and so I held on to the tree for sustenance, you know, because it anchored me. And then holding on to the tree, I went through the tree into the roots and being, had 
the feeling that you spoke so eloquently of oneness with the planet. And what you have not mentioned is I had a congenital stuttering habit. I went through six years of speech therapy. I stuttered all my life like this. And I couldn't speak. Um, now, the stutterers like my, myself, we can speak without stuttering to animals. And we can sing. But we come to people, we can't speak without stuttering. So I went through six years of speech therapy. In the third and fourth grade, they pulled a meeting with the school officials to put me in special education. It was that severe. My family was very, very concerned. But I scored really high on all my tests. So they realized that my speech impediment was not because I wasn't smart. It's just the societal thing. So I'm up in this tree, and the winds and the waves and lightning, and I'm just like closing my eyes. And I open up, and you know, the, the intensity was so much. But I, I thought, this is where I'm going to die. This is a good place to die. Um, I'm, I'm rooted, literally, to the earth. And then I'm up there for hours. And I thought, my biggest issue is I can't speak. I have the hardest time. And so I couldn't date ladies because they wanted to be with the macho, self-assured, you know, male personalities. And I was a person who didn't have those attributes. So I wouldn't stare at people in the eyes. I'd always avert my gaze and look on the ground. That's why I found mushrooms. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm tripping my brains out on my first trip and saying that nothing that I read even comes close to this. <laughs> And then I said to myself, what is my biggest issue, issue in life? And I said, stuttering. And so I said to myself, stop stuttering now. Stop stuttering now. That was my mantra. And I said it hundreds, maybe thousands of times. At that edge and the precipitous of being electrocuted from electric, uh, a lightning strike, from overdosing from mushrooms, from, but the tree was so important to me it literally rooted me to the earth. And these, it, the storm passed. Fortunately, I did not get hit by lightning. I came down uh, off the tree and, and literally came down as I walked back. And I went to my room and I went to bed. And then I woke up the next morning. And I didn't see anybody. Um, and there's this one lady that, that really liked me. She, I think she was maybe sympathy love or generosity. I'm not sure what, what it was. But... I came out of my room and I'm walking down the sidewalk and then here she comes. I go, oh no. And I always like, you know, hi and look down on the ground, you know, and didn't want to say anything else but one syllable because I could usually get that out. Um, and she came up to me and she said, good morning, Paul. And for the first time, I looked at her straight in the eyes and she asked me, how are you doing today? And I said, I'm doing great. And I stopped stuttering in one day. Now, a, a, a short caveat, I still do stutter. Like when I met Bill Gates and Al Gore, I'm starstruck, you know, so I will stutter. Um, if someone throws a microphone in front of me and I've been drinking, you know, smoking some herb, you know, and they ask me, how do you grow mushrooms? I'm going, <laughs> like filling a well with a teaspoon, where do I start, you know? Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> so there are times that I, I do get when I get nervous and whatnot, but you know, I would say it's 99% cured from one psilocybin experience. And I think I basically, from a physiological, neurological point of view, I was able to uh, reestablish a different neural network. And, and I've been told by some, uh, audit, uh, some scientists who study this, that in this, with some type of stutterers in the sixth to seventh month in the womb, um, when my mother was pregnant, uh, uh, there, a nerve did not develop properly. And so a stutterers, what half, oftentimes happens is that we'll try to change a word up really fast and we'll try to trick our brain. So if you see a stutterer and they pause, they're actually trying to get away from the word that's hanging them up, you know, and they try to find an alternative word to go around it. Or they're trying to change the subject in their mind because stutterers tend to be really high intelligence and oftentimes their thought stream is several sentences uh, uh, further ahead than their mouth is speaking. Um, so that, that's really told me that mushrooms 
were my were my sacrament. They they were the crack in my cosmic egg that really made a huge difference to me. And I just want to add one little short uh, event. So um, my wife Dusty knows the story and she loves it. Um, and so we went to Crater Lake Lodge in Oregon, and we're at the lodge and we're having lunch. And this bus boy comes up and he's about 16 years of age or 17, and he goes. Don't interrupt a stutterer. Just smile, be at peace with it. And he finally goes, can I help you? I went, wow, that's exactly the way I stuttered. And so I told him, I stuttered exactly like you. Now this, this I could tell from the, the cultural imprint of who this young man was, that he came from a very conservative, probably Christian family, just like I did. And I, I said, you know, I used to stutter just like you. And he goes, I'm, this is actually getting real for me. <laughs> uh, you did. And I, and I go, yeah. And I was able to cure it in one day. And he goes, well, what did you do? So I told him this whole story. <laughs> His eyes got really wide. <laughs> my wife is like ready to have a heart attack. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and he walked away, but I felt like, yeah, that was right on, you know. <laughs>